Okay, so let's come back to this problem. Read numbers from the user and print them out in reverse order. Let's start with just reading five. And one follow-up to this is we should be able to adapt this if we do it properly to work with any number, five or 5,000 or a million. The idea is if we use arrays to automate things, we don't need to copy and paste code. We don't need to add variable declarations for each extra value. All we have to do is change the size of the array. And if I want more values, I guess I should ask the user not five but 10 or something. So let's try doing that. Let's keep focus though on using loops and using the automation that arrays give us and not just referring to the elements of the array as being individual things. Let's instead use the power that we get by being able to use that indexing. So what I want to do is I want to first read the values. I'm going to read them one by one. Because if I read them one by one, I can have my call to scanf be inside a loop. And then I run the loop however many times I need. So in this case, five times. When I'm done, I'm going to print the values in reverse. OK, so the first thing I want to do is I want to loop over all of the elements of the array. So i is 0, i is less than 5. So the last valid index of the array is index 4. So if i is ever equal to 5, the loop should end. And as I've said, you're perfectly welcome to instead, if you want to loop over all indices, do less than or equal to 4. But you'll find that it's often easier just to remember the size of the array, 5 elements, and then go less than 5. But it is a matter of personal taste. You'll just notice I keep doing that. Uh, OK, so I won't want to print anything. I want to call scanf. So um, first, I have to make sure that if for some reason scanf fails, I'm keeping track of that. So I ask scanf to read me one int. Where am I going to put it? Well, I'm looping over the different indices of my array. So I want to put my result in values sub i. But of course, what scanf wants me to provide is a pointer to something. So values sub i, this expression, is an int, because values is an array of int. And if you go and grab an element of an array of int, you get an int. But I want an int star. I want a pointer. But remember that once you've indexed into an array, once you've subscripted the name of the array, that thing, values sub i, behaves just like any other variable of type int. So of course, if I want to, I can make a pointer to it, arrow pointing at values sub i. That isn't this, the type of this whole expression is int star. OK, so I call scanf, and then I ask the question, did scanf actually read something? So if values read equals, uh, is not equal to 1, then scanf didn't read anything, which means I should print an error. Couldn't uh, spell correctly. Uh, couldn't read um, index. And then I'll print the index out so the user gets some idea why I'm complaining so much. And then I return main ends. Uh, because I obviously, if I couldn't read this value, how am I going to be able to read the next one? Uh, otherwise, I'm good. And I just uh, walk around to the next iteration of the loop. Because the value I wanted will already have been placed into the array by scanf. OK, so there's me reading the values. Now, to print the values out in reverse, I have to start at the highest index, in this case, index 4, and then walk down to index 0. So I want a weird looking backwards for loop. i is equal to 4. i is greater than or equal to 0. i minus minus. Now, be careful with this. If you write this kind of loop, trace through it at least once by hand quickly, just to make sure, because often it's easy to overthink it and accidentally adjust too much for the sort of backwards setting. Uh, OK, so I print out the value um, of my array at index i. And one key place you're likely to make a mistake is thinking, OK, I can't just put values i because it's a weird backwards loop. I should put something weird like 5 minus i. Turns out you don't need to. I, this convoluted for statement is arranging for i to count down, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So all you have to do is use value sub i at each step. OK, and then at the end, we'll print out a new line. Because inside the loop, we don't print any new lines, and so we need to end the line when we're done. So we'll try running that. Um, oh, whoops. Yep, got ahead of myself here. We'll get back to that problem in a minute. Um, OK, so enter five numbers, 6, 10, 17, 187, 111, sure. And then there they are printed out in reverse. And what happens if I get lazy halfway through, 6, 6, 10, 17, and some junk? It says, sorry, I couldn't read index 3. So there's index 0, there's index 1, there's index 2, but it got stuck at index 3. Now, just to be clear, if scanf ever does this to you, calling scanf again won't fix it. That means scanf got stuck at this letter A, and it just stopped. If you try and read a number with scanf again, it'll see the same letter A and still get stuck and then stop. 
The only way of getting Scanf to skip past that would be to tell it, for example, to read a character or something. And you can see here, if we ask the user for numbers and they entered anything else, we just give up. That's their problem, not ours. Okay, so we have a way of reading the numbers and then printing them out in reverse. Um, and I want to add this extra thing just like before, where we ask the user, hey, okay, I've stored all these numbers up. Why don't you go ahead and tell me which one you want and I'll print it back out. So which element do you want? Is it zero, uh, zero through four? Okay, and then they enter an index. If they don't, we print out an error. And then if we're done, we'll just print it right out. We'll say, okay, the element at index something is something. And uh, I've, I've called this variable which index. And then I print out values at that index. All right, so we'll try that out. And then we have to talk about how to make this a little bit more flexible and how to handle a case uh, at the end here where the user could make a pretty significant mistake and where we have to maybe protect them from themselves. So here we go, I enter five numbers. Um, I'm getting fed up with the same five numbers. Okay, there they are printed in reverse. Which element do you want? I will take index number two. And there it is. So there's index zero. Uh, well, sorry, this is index zero, the six, there's index one, and there's index two, it's 17, and it prints that out. We'll try it one more time. Um, this time I want index four, which should be, okay, zero, one, two, three, four, it should be 111, and there it is, great. Okay, and I also know that if I enter my, my numbers and I just get lazy and don't enter an index, this error message gets printed because scanf couldn't read a number. And that's, that's fair enough. Uh, but what happens if I do enter a number, but it won't work in this context? So there are five elements of my array, ele uh, indices zero through four. What if I ask for index, I don't know, 9999? Nine, 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 nine. Uh, well, this error message doesn't get printed. And so in printf, I try to go retrieve index 9999 nine, nine, nine of this array, but this array only has five things. And so the program crashes. That's no good. We need to protect the user from themselves. We gave them very clear directions. Which element do you want? Zero through four. And then clearly the user didn't read directions. It's like students and midterm questions. Uh, so what we want to do is probably check that the index that they entered is valid. That's on us. The programmer has to try and defend against misuse by the user. We can't necessarily trust the user to read or follow the directions. So I should ask, if the index is less than zero, then we're in trouble, or if the index is greater than or equal to five, because the last valid index is four. You could also, and then I'm gonna print an error message. You could also put the uh, statement on line 51 inside of an if statement that checks if the index is between zero and four. That isn't a valid index. And then we'll exit the program before any more damage gets done. Okay, we'll try that out. So first, make sure it still works on a valid case. So I want number three, that's 187, that looks good. Next, let's see if it works if I enter some garbage. So let's say I want number 9999. It says, sorry, can't do that. That isn't within the range that I gave. That's not a valid index. All right, so what we have here is code that can read five values from the user. Um, and uh, into an array using loops. And you might notice the only places where I use the number five are in things like loop conditions. And I can actually even eliminate that. I could make it so that this program could read 5,000 values with almost no change at all. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna observe that what I could do is just have the number of values be kept in a variable. And then if I change that variable, the whole program changes. Instead of entering five, I'll enter whatever this number happens to be. I happen to have it set to five now, but I could have it set to something else. I could easily set it to something else and recompile. Here, we know five is the size of my array, but now that's gonna be some number of values, this, this variable I've created instead. Okay, and then same story here. Four is not the size of my array, it's the last valid index. So the number of values minus one. And then finally, I guess I won't bother giving them this range. So I asked the user to enter an index between zero and num values minus one. And then I have to check that the index is both greater than or equal to zero, and it is not less than or equal to number of values. And we'll try running this to verify that this still works with uh, an array of size five. 
enter five numbers, okay. Um, I don't know, enter element two. And there it is, number 17, fair enough. And you might be able to see that if you change num values to 10 or 1,000, that the program instantly adapts because I'm able to create an array. And because the elements of the array are tied together, they have the common name but different indices, I don't need to identify them as separate independent variables. I can just use indexing inside a loop to refer to them, allowing a huge amount of flexibility for how much data I work with and allowing all the benefits of loops, not only to apply to um, code that gets run, like we've seen earlier, but also the data that gets used.